Hello, hello. We are back for Weekend Mailbag. This is your sh- Saturday show. Saturday show. Saturday. Sure, sure. Saturday show, guys. <laughs> I'm Perry Nemiroff, and this is Dennis Jen. How you doing? Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're coming, uh, approaching uh, Thanksgiving. Soon. I know. I'm, I'm pretty pumped. I'm excited. I- I feel like every single time we have a lengthy holiday and I go home, I ge- I'm not just saying this, I genuinely miss this place and you guys, like, you know how <laughs> that day before everybody leaves, it's like, like you're saying goodbye for forever or yeah. something, but I'm really excited to go home and spend a lot of time with my family. Yeah. Well, wait till Christmas. Cause I know we're, we're gonna, <laughs> that's yeah, a yeah. long time, but don't worry. We're going to have tons of content yes. for you, not just for Christmas week, but also this week, Thanksgiving yeah. week, we have live movie talk for you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but we also have have more content on Thanksgiving Day through that weekend. So stay tuned for all that. But right now, it is mailbag time. We've got five questions to hit. Do you know where they come from? I hope you do. Email, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, use the hashtag Collider Mailbag. Facebook and Instagram, look out for our weekly post. And email is mailbag at collider.com. So send your questions right there. And a much needed reminder that this show exists in podcast form and we need you to tell everybody about it. So share this video, like it, all that good stuff. But then also tell your friends that spend many hours in cars that we want them to listen to Collider Mailbag on Podcast One and on iTunes under the Movie Talk feed. So there you go. My laundry list of things is done and now we can jump into questions. First one is an Instagram question and it comes from AB Myth WWE who writes with all three of her movies this year, Unsane, First Man and Girl in the Spider's Web and no upcoming films on her schedule is Claire Foy's movie career already over with before it even began. No, I don't think so. I think it's a bit premature just because, you know, first of all, Unsane was a very small movie that was never expected to be. I mean, it's, it's almost like an experimental. It was Steven Soderbergh doing mm-hmm. shooting on the iPhone. You know what I mean? Like that movie was never supposed to be big. First Man, she plays a supporting character in that. And it's not her movie. It's Ryan Gosling's movie. So like you can't like say okay the box office kind of disappointment of first man is like on her i you know girl the spider's web yeah she's the lead that's the only one you can kind of point to but i mean that's one movie also the first movie the traction to that movie was david fincher directing plus you had daniel craig who was bond at that time um or still is Bond, but I mean, he was big as Bond uh, being in that movie. So mm-hmm. there was a lot of draw there. So the, I, I wouldn't attribute the box office disappointment of Spider's Web to Claire Foy. So mm-hmm. um, I think she's still, you know, I think she's still viable. They're going to probably give her another chance or two. Uh, and her schedule's free now because she's no longer on the crown. I don't think you can necessarily point a finger at her for any box office disappointment, but there is no denying that it does hurt her movie career that all three of these movies underperformed, a couple of them pretty severely, but that doesn't mean it's all over for her by any means. I feel like we do have this conversation over and over when, you know, like even uh, Michael Fassbender Mm -hmm. after X-Men Apocalypse and Assassin's Creed, it's like, oh, is he not a movie star anymore? No, people have bumps in the road and they overcome all the time. But with Claire Foy in particular, just because this wasn't a big money-making year for her in terms of her her box office movies, she's still, in, in my mind at least, a top contender for best supporting actress so we could be talking about her for an oscar race really soon and she also has an emmy to her name there's no doubt in my mind that even though these movies weren't big hits and yeah she was the headliner in girl in the spider's web which uh really i guess i would call it a flop even yeah, though it made like 7.8 million yeah and the even though the production weekend. budget was significantly less than the last dragon tattoo movie that movie was a uh spider's web was a major uh, financial disappointment in my eyes but i do think that there are many productions out there that probably have their eye on her and i think I think many of them would be lucky to get her. What was uh, it's under? So- was it under Sony? Uh, uh, Spider Web, yeah. Yeah, okay. What do you think they were expecting for the opening week? It made seven point eight over the weekend. I know the first one made a 
decent chunk of change, but like I said, that was different circumstances. The, the first one, the first one actually, I think, only made between twelve and thirteen million opening oh, weekend. Wow. The thing was, it, it had going. it had legs. Yeah. It kept going, and I don't think that's going to be the case here no. because I don't think the word of mouth is very strong. And you know, when I talk about studio expectations, they were the expectations right before the movie hit theaters, and I think at that point it was something like ten million, which mm -hmm. doesn't really even sound like a lot, but. If you were to ask me that question months ago, mm -hmm. I mean, that to me looks like, you know, a 20 to $30 million opening weekend, mm -hmm. or at least I, I think it should be. Mm -hmm. But it's just as we got closer and closer to release, interest down and down and down and down. And then it just didn't help when the first people who saw it reported back that, you know, it's not that great. Yeah. It's not that special. Uh, yeah, I heard it was just okay. I mean, I can't believe that I haven't seen a new Fede Alvarez movie. I will see it eventually, <laughs> but I didn't, I, I went to a different screening. I didn't see it opening weekend. And at this point in time, it's not a priority see, for me, but I will get to it. See, but subconsciously, even that tells you something. It's yeah, like, it's no. not drawing you in there. I so. know, I know. It, it bums me out a little yeah, bit. Yeah. All right, All right. want to take us into number two? Yeah, we got uh, from email, Ryan writes, hello, Collider, with the un unfortunate passing of the great Stan Lee. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the possibility of cameos in future MCU movies. Will he pop up in subtle ways, i.e. background posters a la Marvel Netflix shows? Would Marvel Studios dare to tarkinize him? Or would they even decide to d ditch the idea altogether? Also, I've heard that Marvel Studios already has Stan scene shot for the next three movies, making Spider-Man Far From Home his final real-life appearance in an MCU film. Is there any way you could see them editing his scene in a way that pays homage to that? Thanks for all the great content. I appreciate all your hard work. I don't think we're ever going to see a day when they tarkinize him mm -hmm. by making a digital recreation, but I really do love the idea of them continuing this legacy by finding a way to incorporate him, you know, may maybe with a little more of an artistic flair, like either, you know, in the background, but not as, not as like a human being in the background, but as, you know, uh, artwork somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the example that comes to mind, and, and yes, I know Stan Lee cameoed at the end of Big Hero 6, but the family portrait part part of mm -hmm. Big Hero 6, something like that. Because, you know, even even though he's gone and that's heartbreaking, we will never stop feeling his touch, not just on Marvel, not just on the MCU, but on the entertainment industry overall. And I do think that's been a really like charming, a heartwarming part of the MCU as we know it. That that feeling of of going in and being really excited to see whatever characters we're focusing on and what happens to them. But that that moment when you're just sitting there watching a story and all of a sudden you get Stanley. And mm -hmm. I, I don't want them to ever lose it. And I don't think they need to lose it. I think there are creative approaches to do this and, and really make it something special, continue to make it something special. Yeah, I don't think they should tarkinize him uh, at all. Uh, and they should kind of do those kind of po posters like the Marvel Netflix shows or like uh, Deadpool 2. He wasn't in it, but they had this part where Domino was parachuting down mm -hmm. and he was like this big, giant, like graffiti or, or I don't remember if it was a giant graffiti or poster or something on the side of a building, and that was his cameo. So nods to him. And, you know, Stan Lee was like, he was like the grandfather for, you know, all of the cool grandfather for all of us in the kind of entertainment geek culture. And so, like, his passing, I think, affected a lot of people, you know, here and everywhere else. I, not that I ever undervalued his, his work and his influence on everything, but given everything, you know, I've been reading and everybody's personal experiences with him, I don't know, I, for, for the first time, I really just stopped and thought about how instrumental what he did is to our mm -hmm. careers. Like the fact that Collider might, uh, Collider as we know it might not be here without what he started. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just really profound to think about stuff like that. Yeah, and there's, you know, obviously there's been other comic book characters of significant note, like a Batman or mm -hmm. Superman, but they were like different creators where, where Stanley was someone that was not just created one like yeah. iconic superhero like Spider-Man, but like Spider-Man, the Hulk, X-Men, Thor, like they're so fantastic. Like he created so many. <laughs> it was like his influence was uh, all over. Yeah, and then just you know, how his creations influenced others and eventually influenced not just a movie adaptation, but an entire cinematic universe that is just 
crushing it yeah. at, at the box office right now. But for that other part of the question here, um, so what they were doing with Stanley is they were shooting a bunch of cameos yeah. at once. So the latest report is that we'll be able to see him up to Avengers 4 from this last block of cameos that he shot. So that would include for the MCU, Captain Marvel and Avengers 4. There's also a confirmation that they did do something with him for Into the Spider-Verse, mm -hmm. so you could see that. And it's out there now, so it's not really a spoiler, but he does have some involvement in Ralph Breaks the Internet as well. Mm -hmm. So there's still many cameos to be seen. Also, I had a report here that Fox confirmed via EW that he didn't film a cameo for Dark Phoenix, so that would imply that we also won't see one in New Mutants, mm -hmm. but that's basically the list we have right now, but but again, I think both of us share that same thought, that there are ways to continue that tradition that, that don't involve him physically yeah. being there for sure. And also, uh, when he's talking about should they kind of edit the scene or change it up for, as a homage, I don't think so. I think they should keep it the way it was, uh, the way it was yeah. intended. I, I'm sure there will be a dedication to Stan Lee oh, in, absolutely. in the Avengers, you know what I mean? There's going to be some sort of like this is for Stanley or yeah. You know there'll there'll be some sort of member. Uh, I would for certainly him. hope so, and I, I definitely anticipate that happening. Yeah. Yeah. All right, the next question we have today is an email from OK94 who writes. Hi guys, huge fans since AMC from Tallahassee, Florida. Since Avatar 2 and 3 wrapped filming and the titles for the four sequels supposedly announced, will there be any interest when they release? The, f the first films, the highest grossing of all time, and there are those who like it, yes, but others do bash it. I really like Avatar and I'm interested in the sequels, but I could see problems people had with it in terms of plot and dialogue. I think people would have liked Avatar more if James Cameron stuck to his original script Script, Project 880, as it was far more original, unpredictable, epic, sci-fi crazy with unused plot points, locations, characters, and creatures that would flesh out the film more. Anyways, back to you guys. Are you interested in Avatar sequels or do they not interest you? Thanks and have a nice day. I'm interested because it's James Cameron. And not only that, it's it's kind of cool now to like hate on Avatar. People like, seriously, like it, it, now, now people are just bashing the movie. I quite enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a great experience, great uh, movie experience. Yeah, sure, there were some issues with it, but I don't think they took away that much from my overall enjoyment of the film. Though, I will say, it's a movie where when it's done, I didn't need to go... I didn't need a sequel. Like, mm -hmm. sure, I'm actually looking forward to that, um, though I do think that two would have been good enough and just made it a trilogy is there really four sequels is it three or four sequels i well i think it's four movies total and i okay, think the, so. the deal is that he shot avatar two and three back to back they're gonna see how those do and then if they do well they'll green light four and five okay cool um so i am looking forward to it i want to see what james can look you can't doubt him i, I tried it. i doubted him before Everyone said Titanic was going to be a big flop. They spent a lot of money on it. Became the biggest movie, grossing, highest grossing movie at that time. Then Avatar was another one where like, oh my God, this movie is about a bunch of blue, tall, lanky aliens. This is going to fail. How much did they spend on this thing? What another disaster. Beats Titanic. So do not count out James Cameron. That is what I, I have learned. I have not learned my lesson. Okay. Because you're going to doubt him. Yeah. A, another thing, I'm too. I'm going to doubt him. He's done two sequels. Terminator 2 and Aliens. I don't care. You're still okay. not convincing me. You're making a very good case. But there's a... <laughs> All right. So with Avatar, I don't dislike the movie. But I definitely didn't, you know, board the Avatar hype train, mm -hmm. so to speak, like many others did. But, you know, with a, with a box office haul like that, there's clearly many people out there who love the movie enough to see it multiple times. I really do think they missed a major opportunity by having to wait oh, so yeah. long I for do. other movies. With... I would just... I don't know, even with the track record that you're bringing up, I would be so shocked if interest is still there to that degree to make these new Avatar movies as successful as that first, or even just super successful without hitting record-breaking mm -hmm. status. I mean, we're talking about a movie that went on to be the highest grossing movie worldwide and the second highest grossing at the domestic box office. So we're talking about a lot of money, but 
I don't know. I, I, I really dislike the phrase that it's cool to hate Avatar, mm -hmm. but I know where it comes from. I just think that there, there was too much of a gap, too much of a gap for that kind of sentiment to mm -hmm. grow mm -hmm. and not, not necessarily make these next movies a joke, but it's also like within our little bubble, the, the movie news coverage industry, it, it has become a little bit of a joke, like the constant like talking about it and the mm. pushing back and, and all the news. I mean, even when we're discussing covering, we were discussing covering for Movie Talk this week, that announcement before that Alita trailer mm -hmm. that they had wrapped shooting with the principal cast two and three. And it's like, you know, what, what are we going to say about it anymore? Are we going to continue to say, oh, well, they're done. We're still not that interested in it. It's like we've all covered it time and time mm -hmm. again and all expressed that opinion time and time again. So well, who I knows? think you have to wait till like a trailer or yeah. some images come out. Cause well, the, the, they it, have released cast images that did nothing for me. But I mean, what were the cast? Were them it was in just their them, gear or No, something? it was just them like standing around and introducing the kids. But yeah. all right, well, cast images aside, do those four titles do anything for you? Uh, I, I don't delve too deeply into titles. I mean, yeah. I just, you know... Ever since Star Wars, the Phantom Menace was announced, I was like, all right. You know, because that was like at that time, it was like the most highly anticipated yeah. movie like ever before. Phantom, and like they announced that title. And everyone was like, huh? OK. So I don't try to look too deep into the titles. Yeah. I mean, look, we're all waiting for the Avengers 4 title, right? That is true. Ultimately, is it going to change your mind whether or not, A, you're going to see it, or two, whether it's going to be good or not? No, not one bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually titles matter for new franchises, for yeah. new things that, like, you know, when they come out and no one knows what they are. Uh, like, for example, you know how much I love Pacific Rim. Yep. I think that's a terrible title. I think, I think it contributed to it not making as much. I mean, Pacific Rim is basically, it's a World War II title like people thought that it was a world war ii you know uh, uh movie um so i think that franchise would have benefited from uh, you know giant robots fighting yeah, giant yeah. monsters you know something very very you know Jaegers, plain jaegers versus Kaiser yes or something, something like, like that, that. Uh, but in this case though i think it it i obviously it doesn't matter for the end product whatever we wind up getting it's judging the movie on its own that's that's really all that matters when we see it but at this point in time also because we're not talking about an avatar movie that we're getting next year yeah. the release date of that first one is december 18th 2020 think about how many yeah. other opportunities we're going to have to rehash this same exact conversation so it's just that with such a big gap between the first avatar and the second one I feel like every single opportunity they have to bring up Avatar needs to have some sort of value where it starts to rekindle that excitement yeah. that was there for the first like one. Like I said, and the no, titles I, didn't do it for yeah, me. I think it has to be some sort of teaser trait. The visuals. I mean, remember with Avatar, yeah. a lot of people went in, you know, because they got to in, enter like a, and immerse themselves in a, a whole different world. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know. It, 3D is one of those things that I, I also don't bash 3D, but there was like a bunch of 3D movies that came out that didn't need to be 3D. You know, yeah. they just made them 3D where something like Avatar felt like you, you got an enhanced viewing of it with the 3D. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know. Well, yeah. we will see what happens. All right. Want to do a yes. question for, for uh, fourth question we got from Instagram. We have, Josh underscore the Jew writes, Hey, Collider crew. My question is about uh, at eighth grade a movie. Uh, while I haven't seen every movie this year yet, I've seen a whole lot and it is still my favorite movie of the year. What are the chances of it getting nominated for best picture, actress, director, or original screenplay at the Oscars? I would absolutely be devastated if, uh, if at uh, LCK Fisher doesn't get nominated. Thank you for your time and stay sweaty. I am so sorry, Josh, but I have a feeling Elsie's not getting a nomination. And that's not to say that I wouldn't be rooting for her to get one, but I don't think that's where eighth grade has its best chance of securing an Oscar nomination. 
I definitely wanted to do a shameless plug for Collider FYC because the episode you're going to get on Monday is our best picture episode and we each run through our 10 picks and you might see eighth grade pop up on a list but (laughs) where I think this movie has the best chance of getting an Academy Award nomination is in that best original screenplay category and I actually think it's not even a long shot I think it's got a real shot of getting that and I want to see it happen I watched it for the second time the other uh, the other week and that movie just just charmed me and and made me like want to cower in a corner for poor Elsie. I mean, just it was all that same emotion that I had the first time over, and it all came flooding back. And I was happy to have all those feelings back. Mm-hmm. It's just it's such a, a roller coaster of an emotional eighth grade experience, and it, it feels so honest and raw to me. I I really do love that movie, and I hope it gets recognition this award season. I have not seen the movie no. yet. Yeah. I, I, where did you see it second time? Did you get a screen yeah, or something? Yeah, I'll bring that in okay. for you. You, yeah, you need to see it. It definitely was on my list because uh, I, I had been hearing about it, I think, since earlier this yeah. year. It's so good. And uh, didn't they come by the, in the studio? They did. Yeah. Um, Bo and Elsie came in and we sat down. We did something like a 10 to 15 minute standard interview where we got to talk about the making of the movie. And then they were kind enough to give a bunch of us in the office advice for our uh, our office problems. Yeah. Didn't like Roka have like a bunch of office problems? Problems. I think he asked them a dating question. Okay, yeah. Personal, yeah. personal yes. problems. Yes, okay. yes. Um, and obviously I asked so, a cat yes. question. I definitely want to see it. I know I'll definitely see it before, you know, nominations yeah, come yeah. out. I feel like uh we gotta make you a list. Yeah, there's a lot of there's movies. A, there's I a need bunch of must sees, but that that should be at the top of it. Yeah. All right, All right one more? Yeah. Here we go. It's an email from Jason Masters who writes Dennis and Perry, why don't you guys partake in the movie trivia? I really enjoy you both and think you should give it a shot. Uh, I really enjoy the movie uh, Trivia Schmodown. It's a lot of fun to watch. I see all the people competing. They're having a lot of fun. It's a blast. I would like to do it. The only problem is, and I think I would do okay at it. The only problem is my memory is not the best. It's I've seen a ton of movies, yeah. but like literally, like I don't know, a movie I saw last week, like Wreck-It Ralph. I, I'll like, okay, what happened in that movie again? You know, seriously. Like, I, I can tell you, like, very small details, and that's just, like, a week ago, it's right? It's difficult when you see so much. Yeah, and, and so, one, my memory's not the greatest. So the only way I would be able to compete well is to actually, like, study, mm-hmm. which is, like, to constantly remind myself of movies I've already seen. Um, I just don't have the time for that. Yeah. I mean, that would literally be like, okay every day like i would have to like study for an hour mm-hmm. or something like that and i just don't have the time i have so much that i have to do that here do. at collider <laughs> and other stuff so yeah I, I it'd be fun but i just i just don't have the time to commit to it i think that's a big part of it yeah. is just you know a, a lot of the people who are in the collider office all the time like we we have so much to do yeah. all the time and it's wonderful things it's just if i had to tack on you know the time it takes to do a schmodown shoot let alone the prep that something like that would require and also just just the stress yes I, i'm competitive and I'm, I'm very hard on myself when i'm wrong mm. and not just in a game setting even when we're on movie talk and i say like a name wrong or mm. a title wrong or or I'm off on a box office number, I'm like way too hard on myself about it. So do I really need to start losing Schmodown matches? Probably not. But I will say, I think one of the best things that I've felt I've shot in this studio all year is that Jurassic Park oh, yeah. showdown. That was a lot of fun. I, I love the game so much. And obviously it's fun to win, but the level of confidence and excitement I sat down at that table with during that match, like that must be what all of like the Schmodown mm-hmm. champs feel. I mean, I really could have sat there and answered a whole nother half hour's worth of Jurassic Park questions, but it was nice to be able to tap into what all the other competitors must feel. Yeah. And that was really exciting. You know, one that I definitely couldn't do, even though I, I love all the things is like the inner geekdom because yeah. uh, I just, for me, I'm a person who loves all types of movies, and so I'll watch a broad range. And I, the problem is I don't watch each one enough to be like, okay, I'll remember mm-hmm. the 
you know, the guy's name or the code number to, mm-hmm. you know, like that just, that's just way too deep for, for me. It's a completely me. different type of movie watching yes. to, to sit down. Cause like I did, when I was playing with Jonathan, I did try to stu- studying feels like so pointless to me. <laughs> Any movie that I tried to study when we were in the team league uh-huh. together never came up. Yeah. Not once, nothing ever did. It was always something else, but Watching a movie to study for Schmoden is such a different feeling from watching a movie just to watch a movie. Like, I couldn't believe some of the things I was trying to train my eye to look yeah, at. Yeah, you know what I do do sometimes if I watch a movie? Like, I just rewatched Rain Man. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've seen it a ton of times, but I hadn't seen it in a while. I rewatched it the other night and I was like, oh, that could be a question. Yeah. Okay, that could be a question. We have that, that conversation be, here yeah. all the like, time. So, like, may, maybe I can, like, just start writing questions and sending them in so I can get them asked. You better watch it. If Christian watches this episode of Mailbag, you're going to get asked to do that very soon. Yeah, the thing is, I, I only would do it for movies I'm already watching. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, there was, there was some cool cool things that i was like oh that's like an almost like an easter egg type of question you know a fun thing all right that's it so i i don't think either of us have much schmo down in the near future (laughs) no no just i I just think it's the time it'd be great if we could just commit that much time to it but we have there's a lot of work to do here. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll put a Christian on the spot here. If you ever want to do a, a scream schmo down, okay. I'll jump in for that. Right. Pretty much in a heartbeat. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's all we've got for you guys today. That was our five questions. A huge thank you to everybody who submitted them. As always, this was a blast. Thank you for doing this, Dennis. Yeah, no problem. Um, also, before I sign off, the reason why this is here is if you happen to be a listener or a viewer of The Witching Hour... Our guest for this week's upcoming episode on Tuesday is none other than Don Coscarelli. We're talking about his new book, and Mm. obviously we've got Phantasm here. You can expect some conversation about that as well. So check that out on Tuesday. Anything you want to plug before we sign off? Yeah, if you are into video games and have you been listening to uh, Collider Games podcast or if you caught the latest Collider Heroes, we're actually giving away an Incredibles 2 custom Xbox One X. That is the whole console, and it's got this cool cool custom design have you seen it yet i have not seen this oh you should see it it's really really cool uh we're giving that away so if you watch the latest podcast or follow uh the collider gaming twitter you will hear more about how to win that i can't wait to check that out uh thanks again for watching this episode of mailbag don't forget to like and share it and also tune in tomorrow morning for a brand new episode Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.